Hey, so uh, welcome to another episode of the Sales Syndicate podcast. Uh, I call it an episode. Um, for the next few, we're actually going to do some really short little snippets um, covering different sales triggers. Um, I think it would make absolutely no sense if we combine five different triggers in one episode. So we're going to give you little bite-sized chunks, um, and hopefully it's something that you can listen to when you're on the train, when you're going for a run, when you're going for a walk, something like that. So the first one we're actually going to talk about today um, is growth revealed. So, Biff, do, do you want to just, uh, well, give us, I guess, a full rundown, a deep dive of growth revealed sales triggers? Yeah, so gro- growth revealed will actually kind of follow some of the other topics that we've covered. Um, so just to kind of take somebody on on the journey of that as well, if you can, you know, imagine where a company sits you, they perhaps, you know, opens a new headquarters or a new office. Um, It may have even been like a new facility that they've opened somewhere. But what they've then done is obviously identify um, growth for their product. But more importantly, they've really doubled down and found that market fit in terms of what their product can provide and, and ultimately where that can lead to future growth within that business as well. So quite often in this instance, businesses will then reveal that they have uh, experienced growth and again, discovered that market fit. And ultimately from here, then the co- company really is gonna start to double down um, on this area or this this new site or office in terms of helping that company obviously for, through its further expansion. Um, and I'll, again, ultimately growth. So typically things that you'll start to see alongside this is probably a huge ramp up in terms of staffing. Um, so where they may have initially had quite a lean um, base or, you know, core kind of focus of staff that they were looking at really um, tailoring their training, helping them bring them up to speed in terms of the business and the focus you'll now start to really see that kind of scale. And that'll generally be across sales teams. It may be across operations, HR, you know, even customer success. But this really now it's, you know, the company have proven their model and it's time for them to to press on and, and obviously ultimately make as much revenue as they possibly can. And I, I guess when companies reveal growth, there's usually, well, I, I'm, I'm, I'm hypothesizing here, there'd usually be a, perhaps a surge in demand. So, you know, company X reveals, you know, staggering performance over the last year. They're in, they're growing in this region, this region. Naturally, I guess, um, customers or prospects are going to look at that and think, you know, maybe this is something we should consider, which then has a, another after effect on, on that growth as well. And that demand. Yeah, absolutely. There's a lot of different factors that can lead to this really one, uh, you know, can be through your just general expansion, let's say into a new country and they're looking to expand that way. Other kind of external factors may actually be, you know, current market conditions or economic climate. You know, typically there's a lot of products out there or services that will help people in different circumstances. So for argument's sake, you know, I know the market is very much switched um, where we are right now compared to the last two or three years where perhaps business development came easy right across the staffing and recruitment um, side or industry. Likewise, within the general B2B, Whereas obviously now where things have flipped is, you know, there's a lot of talk around, you know, obviously the UK into a recession. Um, the US is having an economic downturn as well. So there will be some tools in that that can then provide, you know, better assistance or better services to the market. So even, you know, factors like that might then lead to, you know, growth being revealed where suddenly that their market fit for their product or service suddenly becomes perhaps not so much of a, a want or a nice to have, but actually now it uh, cements itself as a need. I'm trying to think of an example of this. And I, uh, the one that comes to mind is off the back of COVID. I think Tesco basically said that they had, uh, it was, I can't remember the exact figure. It might've been something like 700 million profit or something like over and above what they were expecting to get. So they actually repaid their COVID grants in full, mm-hmm. but obviously off the back of Tesco saying, oh, we've made hundreds of millions more than we thought that's a great opportunity for that, say, Mercedes to reach out and say, do you, do you fancy a few more vans uh, to keep up with that demand? Yeah, this is probably the best one, to be honest, is, you know, looking at the world in terms of payments. So actually, you know, the world's, you know, in terms of how people will go out and purchase products, a food shop, anything, you know, it's a real mix between obviously cash and card. And actually, you know, through 
COVID happening and, um, you know, through that, actually the banning of cash being taken in, in establishments, obviously saw them absolutely rocket rise in terms of the amount of people accepting payments either via phone or obviously via debit or credit card. And with that, when you start to look at the likes of Visa or MasterCards and actually their sales figures, you'll see that they actually went through the roof um, because there was no other way. So that's probably a great example in terms of, you know, different circumstances, different um, external factors that just help to accelerate, you know, somebody's product or service. Okay, then. So in terms of tracking growth revealed, I guess, you know, you're looking at um, company press releases, company performance updates, uh, annual reviews and reports, that sort of stuff. Exactly that. Yeah, that, that's typically where you're going to see it. But I say, you know, other things just to check as well is to track, you know, their hiring as well. You know, are they actually really starting to ramp that up? Are there, you know, clear, clear signals really that they're, you know, obviously doubling down on certain regions or certain products. That, that's also another way. So, you know, typically, obviously, you can track over the likes of LinkedIn. Um, obviously, you know, through their own websites in their own uh, recruitment forums, or likewise, if you're utilizing any job boards, good way to track that as well. Okay, brilliant. I mean, we said it was going to be short and sweet, six and a half minutes, a uh, little sort of snippet of an episode talking about growth of field. Um, we'll catch you in the next episode where we're going to be talking about new facilities and facility expansion investments, which is, I kind of guess, in a way, circling back to our previous episode where we were talking about new offices, R&T tech hubs. Um, so if you haven't listened to that one, check that out. Um, but we will catch you in the next episode.